All right, we're super excited here on KHQA tonight to welcome back a guy who's familiar to folks up in the home area, obviously, not just as a former Western Illinois defensive lineman and team captain during his stint at Western Illinois, but for a long time, Harvey Harrington served on staff with Kelly Sears as part of his Macomb football teams. And all of the things that Harvey has done, including training a lot of people, uh, a guy's a strength and conditioning wizard in a lot of different realms, from football players to athletes to even, what, uh, for Miss Illinois, had right. his when he was doing that. Harvey Harrington is now an author. He's written the book, The 80-20 Rule, which came out in December. And Harvey, reading through this book, um, this sounds almost like a manual to yourself that you've written, because I know you were a young man you got started in football, you were a young man who was looking with a lot of passion, but no way to really figure out, no blueprint to figure out how to make that passion reality. I have to imagine there was a lot of catharsis for you in going back and writing a manual that not just serves you, but serves other people who were in your position, or who are in your position right now. Absolutely. That's, that's exactly why I wrote it. I, I imagined myself in uh, eighth grade saying going up to an adult saying hey can you teach me how to become a better athlete what are the things that i need to do and if that person didn't have the time that person could hand me this book and say here here's a lot of information that you can work on on the next couple of years that'll make you a better person and athlete the premise of 80 20 80 20 rule is that 80 percent of athletes the achievement that you're looking for in your specific sport is mental not physical does mm -hmm. that apply to everything, though? You've trained people in a weight room. It seems like the lessons in this, I'm reading this as a parent and as somebody else, are applicable to almost everything, not just athletics, Harvey. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. You can look at it as, say, 20% uh, of the people do 80% of the work, you know, uh, on this planet, period. So, yeah, no, it applies to just about everything. It is up here, the mind over the body, especially when it comes to sports. You talk about removing friction for your lives. How important and critical is that? Because when you start seeing successes, as I drew the book, it seems like you figured that out organically on your own. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I call them potholes. I hope I'm not jumping ahead of you, but uh, removing the friction. Fr friction is like potholes. You drive down the road, you hit them, it messes things up. So if you can remove some of the friction of why you think the way you do, why you talk, act, re respond, if you can clean that up, your road's easier. You can travel that road easier. So you can work out, you can train, you can practice. If you get rid of all of the things that prevent you from being your best. So yeah, get that friction out of there. You mentioned in your book that you didn't really have role models. I think you mentioned Bill Wills, one of the first ones, as your defensive line coach at Western Illinois. The chance for you to be now to somebody else, what does that mean to you, Harvey? I'll tell you what it means to me. Uh, I've, I've, one thing I've done as a coach, and thank goodness for sp uh, Facebook, social media, I have kept track of a bunch of my boys over the years. My oldest group of guys right now, because uh, 38 is the oldest group, maybe 39 even, uh, that I still talk to so many of them. You mentioned Bill Wilt. Well, his son, Aaron Wilt, became, I became his coach. So Aaron and I have been talking back and forth. I've just got over the years a group of young men that I keep in contact with. I see that they're married, their kids, how, how they're doing in life. So uh, it, that, that's been the coolest part of all of this if you're adding that value, which I try to do every day, they don't, most of them don't leave you. They come do back. You think, do you think to some point for you, because you were really good, successful at a guy who had a cup of coffee with the Colts and had a chance to play some, some pro football on other levels. But do you think for you, the fact that you were a self-made man, that it wasn't all naturally gifted to you in some way, helped inspire your journey and your ability now to teach people? Because I know very specifically, you know, weight room training for you is about connection as much as it is anything, I would think. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think that's kind of made you successful what you do, just the fact that you have become self-made sort of guru to people? Yeah, I, I mentioned it in the story, this kid uh, by the name of Travis Kauf, my first year coaching at uh, Macomb. 
he was me, man. <laughs> you know, I, I people would see me even today at my age. I'm still a pretty big guy, but Travis Kaufman, glasses, uh, kind of nerdy, uh, but he loved football and he wanted it so bad. And he was at a point when my first year there, he may have not had a chance to see the field. And I just saw me and I said, I'm going to help this kid at least get some playing time. I mean, he wasn't starting material and guess what? His senior year, he started in and out all season. So uh, yeah, that helped me see that kid over the super stud athlete walks in like that. You know, some of the kids that's just got it made. So that's who I set out to help and, and created a system to help all of them though. So yeah. And Enthusiasm is, is big in what you preach as well, because so much of this, and I get the, the kind of the idea you have always been at some root core level, very positive in who you are and may you pursue things just from reading your book. Um, how much of that positivity is, is the key to everything and, and keeping that mindset? Because so much of what you do harkens back to that in your book. Oh, yeah. You with the uh, bad mentality or by, bad negative mindset. You compare the two, negative and positive. If you're working out with a negative mindset, if you're playing football with a negative mindset, every little wall you run into, you're going to make excuses. If it's positive, you find your way around, through, over, or under that wall. So a positive mentality. And But, I, Chris, I wasn't always that. I grew up in a pessimistic environment, a very negative environment. I had to work on that. I had to read. I had to study that. Um, and break through that. So I, I then in turn started using that as a coach as well, because that's a, that is a huge roadblock for people to be negative. Oh, the coach doesn't like me because, you know, instead of saying, okay, I'm struggling here, a positive mindset will say, what am I doing wrong? Do I need to go speak to the coach? Do I need to sit down and break down what I do every day to see where I'm making mistakes? That's what positive thinking will do. It doesn't do it for you. It just helps you do it better and do it the right way versus, ah, uh, crap, that crap mentality. You know, that I've seen so much of that when I stepped to the other side of the field, meaning went to coach versus player, I, you get to see the difference. And, and being on both sides, you get to understand. When I was playing, uh, one of my teammates and I, we came here together to Western. He didn't have – the best attitude, the best, uh, great, great athlete, just not the right demeanor and mindset. So when things went wrong, he went with them versus going the opposite way. So yeah, you got to have that. You got to, and all, especially when you were dealing with some bad seasons, especially as a coach. You, gotta you, have you, 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 you are kind of old school. I'm kind of old school and everybody talks about this new school mentality with kids and, you know, um, they're not the same as we were, and things are different. The lessons in your book, though, seem to be applicable to if there is a new mentality, they, they seem to work very positively within that as well. You've worked with young people for almost the entirety of your adult life now. Is the difference in kids, are all kids reachable? Sort of what have you learned in the process of being a coach and now an author, and I know somebody who's a professional motivator, to, to, to read kids in a different generation. They are different. They are. And uh, Coach Sears and all of us, we, you've, you've grown up through the change too. So I started coaching in 98. And I don't want to offend anybody by this because you, can, you have to change with the times. We all do. That old, I stick to the way I do it and that's the way it, the way it always will be done. That can't we went through a time of, when I started coaching, I was coaching young men that were men, using that term. Then we went through an era of no kid left behind. We went through an era of incentivizing. It changed the, the, the kid. And as a coach, you have to change with it. I think that you, I, I, I thought about that as I wrote this book, as today's generation kid, can they relate to that? It's just like the Jordan show that's out right now there's going to be some people that are going to be like that's over the top and for the 80 percent it is but if you can take those nuggets and and just read over them and process them in today's kid and the generation that we have out there now in the 20s you can still apply this is all applicable to that 
you know, you still got to be tough at times. You, st- you got to love, you got to be tough, you got to listen. So it, it's just the kid is different. But you, you have to figure out them on their level. You mentioned 1998, which I believe was your first year coaching with Kelly, and that was a really mm-hmm. special, specific mm-hmm. year with McComb because that might be one of the strangest successful ball teams I can ever remember hovering. How important was the year to you in your development as a coach just to kind of see the rags to riches thing play out before your eyes? It was amazing. I showed up the night of the last loss. We It was <laughs> Uh, Coach Ball got me out there. I needed one hour to graduate. Weirdest thing, I had no plan to coach high school football. Zero. I needed an hour to graduate. Coach Ball said, go out there. I'll get you that hour. Help out Coach Sears. I go to that game that Friday night. They lost. They're 0-3. So that the next week I started coaching, helping out. I was just a defensive end coach. I was just a young rookie you know, so, and then we ran that gauntlet, <laughs> you know, and Coach Sears had a, what did he call it? Oh, your heart, your heart, listen to your heart was our, was our theme. Listen to your heart. And the kids just grew and grew and grew. And I went from, I'm out of here at the end of the year to 18 years later. <laughs> I, there was no plan for that to happen, man. I fell in love with it. Of winning first, and then I then I realized that man, I can add value, and I was still playing pro ball, you know. So I come back, and then one day I was like, I'm going to open up a gym, and I'm going to train these kids, and I'm going to train myself, and one thing led to the other. You were on a pretty unique and kind of kooky and fun staff to be on with those guys, with Coach Sears and Coach Taylor and Coach Kreps. And- uh, Steve Horrell and all those guys that were on staff with you. What did you learn from those guys and being around kind of a different environment, Harvey, than, than Coach Ball environment, which is collegiate and a little more professional, I would think. Davey T, Coach Taylor. I love Kelly. Kelly's my best friend. He's my big brother. But when I first did, I coached there the first, I don't know, six years for free. I did it just for the love of it. And Dave Taylor every day. Thank me for being there. I kid you not. I can't sit here and say I walked away there. Every day we walked off the field, he thanked me for being there. And that turned me, that made me fall in love with those guys. Coach Dave Taylor, I don't know if I've ever told him that. Um, And then just watching Kelly, you know, you know Kelly. (laughs) You know Kelly. I call him the chief. Uh, The man loves football. He is, uh, when you want to talk about studying the game, watching our that year we had to beat mama the last game of the year and we were down and kelly had been suspended from that game because of kids the previous game going out on the field and he went out to pull his kids off which got him suspended and uh just witnessing a halftime we were down at mama and i don't know if McComb had lost the moment in 12 years prior to that and that started my journey as being a motivator too because I got overwhelmed with saying these kids have been through so much. And if they lose this game, they don't make the playoffs. That was my first ever motivational speech. And it just, it just grew from there watching Kelly and Dave and Max and some of the, some of the younger coaches or the freshman and sophomore coaches uh, were there. Steve, you know, just, I, we, we were a family. We had to be, we went through a lot. From the standpoint of, of reading your book, it becomes very, very clear very quickly that you've become, whether you knew or not, a really good student in life and perceiving the lessons that come to you, distilling and figuring out how to the, apply to your life. I, I want to know, Harvey, what did you learn about being an author? And what did you learn about yourself about writing the 8024? <laughs> what did I learn about being an author? I don't know yet, to be honest, because all, all I did, you know, it's not, I, it's not fictional. It's all truth. Uh, there's no, in my opinion, there's no fluff in here. That's why I, I put a couple of stories in there because I, it was suggested that I do. That's how you keep people's attention. Uh, so being an author, I don't know if I'll you know, understand that experience for another five years or so, because I've got a lot of books in me about self-help, uh, motivating and uh, inspiring and helping people. So I don't know if um, if I've learned that yet. The book is so new still. You know, I'm still trying to figure out how to market it. That's what we're 
the purpose of this is to get this out and let kids know, let parents know, let coaches know that it's just a little manual. Like you said, I've never called it a manual. I thank you for that. It's a manual to make yourself better. So I don't know yet. I just know I've left something here on this planet for, for kids years to come because this won't change what I put in here. I forget the first, the other part of the question. That, uh, just, you know, obviously, I think you, you nailed exactly what we were looking for. You, you did mention we're, we're here to promote this thing because I think it's wonderful to get it into the hands of as many kids as humanly possible. How kids find the mm -hmm. A24? You, the, you can get it on Amazon. It's, I, I set it as low as I can at $12.99 on Amazon. Um, you can also get it off my website. If it comes from my website, it's signed by me. Uh, you can go to harveyharrington.com and order it. I literally just changed the price today because of this interview to, and dropped the price down to $7.99. That includes shipping. Right now in this downtime, there, there's nuggets in here, like chapter two, personalities. Personalities. I'm gonna, can I hit on that for a second? Oh, absolutely. I talk about personalities in here. It was a, that was one of the biggest game changers for me. I am an S personality that's in this book. I love people. I want to serve people. I want to help people. I was a shy, submissive little kid that grew into this body and grew into this mindset. So when I learned that I was an S mentality, that's how I used to play football. I get in my stance and the ball would snap and I come off like, hey, how's it going? Let's, you know, pity pat. You can't play football that way. I would have never made it to college, let alone professionally playing with that mindset. And a guy once taught me, he didn't teach me personalities, but he, he took me, I think I talked about that in the book. He took uh, Buddy and I, Tony, out to the park and he showed us all these moves and then he taught me the difference between who I was and who I needed to be. And that was to raise my deep personality. So I read uh, Dr. Robert Rome's book, Personality Profiles. And I was like, oh my goodness, that, that's how I did it. And I have, I'll put that in every book I put out because it's so important to understand who you are why you think and say and react the way you do, and even why you hear things the way you do. And you need to be able to change those things at times. If I'm a get after type of guy, everybody can't relate to that. So some people I have to love on. Some people I have to give all the information and the materials to. Some people are so loud mouth, I gotta teach them how to be quiet. Sometimes I gotta teach myself. Like on this interview, this is not me. I'm, this is me right here. This is, this is me. But if I talk to you like this, if I stand in front of a couple of hundred kids like this, I have to change my personality to meet with the audience and the person or, and even my kids. So uh, that, that's in and of itself, that's enough information to make a difference in a, anyone's life about your personality. So uh, it's a great chapter. <laughs> <laughs> when you're coaching, uh, when you're out meeting groups of kids, it's the, and I know since 1998, you probably can't estimate how many kids' lives you've impacted, but what's the best part for you, Harvey, of seeing um, the point A to point B and knowing that you had some small part of ownership? Because the kids have to do it themselves, but for you to have some small part of ownership in that progress, what, what does that mean to you? Here, I just send you, I get these all the time. I get emails, uh, text. A kid just messaged me today from a college that I don't know what college it, it is or what school it is. I assume it's the college that I spoke at, spoke to. And um, he just, all these college kids, especially all college kids, but athletes, spring athletes that are sitting home right now, that's what I'm working on right now to provide the content for that. He messages me and says, hey, Mr. Harrington, this is, I won't say his name, uh, what are some psychological ways to improve my mindset for success? Now, he thought enough of my talk to reach out to me because I put my number out there everywhere. So I, I know, I always tell kids, and hopefully that way I can get to all of them, I say, I know this message is going to change one of you today. One of you is going to get something out of this. So when I say that, if I'm sitting in the audience, I, I'm hoping I'll say that's going to be me. So obviously it was this kid. Obviously it's been other kids that I work with, kids that send me their workouts at home right now because they don't have a gym to go to. Uh, it's, I think it, 
it's so rewarding that it's hard to explain. But I, I, there's thousands more that I know that I can help. So I don't let it. Uh, it fills my heart. It fills my tank because this is not easy. You know, I dropped my life to do this, move my family to do this. And it's not easy to get yourself out there. I send out thousands of emails a month between me and the, the people that work for me doing this. And it gives me gas to keep moving forward every time a kid does that. Every time a kid comes up to me, uh, I was up at MSOE, an engineer college, a football guy speaking at an engineer college, uh, speaking at MSOE, and a kid comes up and said, your, your life is my life right now. I spoke to him. And later on that month, his dad reached out to me. And his dad talked to me about that kid, about his daughter. I sent his daughter a book for free. That is why I'm in this. I, I'm not in it for the money. Like we said before we went on here, I'm in it to add value. If I keep adding value, it's going to come back to me. So I'm not I've always, Go ahead. I always serve a server, man. I, I have always been a server. I'm not doing a job if I don't ask you because I know you're at your best in a weight room, in a room full of people to motivate and inspire. And we're in this weird new reality, COVID-19, and you're, you're not being able to get on the road. Uh, not being able to do what it is that you love to do most in this world right now. Um, how tough is that just to balance this point? And I know you're on the positive mindset. Is it just get through this and then back to your life's work? Kind of how do you approach this whole shutdown? Because of my mindset, my training, again, the old me, I keep a video uh, on tab on Facebook that talks about how pessimistic I was and I listen to it every once in a while. The old me would have been in the doghouse. The me who I am now, I just had to do some research. I had to watch some interviews and figure out what's my next step. And that became, this is my second priority right now. My number one priority, you guys can't see them, but back on the other side of that door, my three kids and my wife, this is time that I have with my family that I will never get again. We know what summers look like. We know what Christmas break looks like. I've set goals for each one of my kids that I want to get to know them better deeply. I want to get to know my wife better deeply. My wife has been blessed to be able to work at home. So, see, my mindset changes. And I'm going to say this to you, Chris, uh, whether you put this on, on or not, and I guess I'm fine with it now. January 13th, I found out that I have kidney cancer. Oh, my God. And uh, 10 years ago, I had some dealings with it, and they froze it, and it turned out not to be cancer. But it uh, – and they froze it and killed it, blah, 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 supposedly, but it came back. I had shoulder surgery December 31st to get it in on last year's insurance. Because of that surgery, it, it uh, showed this underlying issue I was having. So I've been on lockdown in this house for quite a while since this COVID thing started. Uh, but see, that's my mindset, man. You know, 10 years ago when I went through this, I fell apart. And now that's why this book is important. And if you don't like my book, you don't like me, I'm telling you to get your butt up and go out and find some self-help books. Fictional stuff, sure, it's fun but there's nothing that's gonna change your mindset and your way of thinking. My surgery is May 6th. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna have the surgery. I've been working out to keep myself healthy and I'm gonna attack that and I'm gonna keep moving forward. That's, a, that's I changed myself to that. That's not where I come from, that's not who I was. Deep down, still inside, that's probably still not completely me, but I put enough in. That's why it's in this book, to be a better person. So um, I don't let life stop me, I guess. I don't know how to sum that all up to do that, to know that I'm about to have a kidney taken out, but I know I'm going to be all right. I just need it out. I need it out of my body to get healthy, to keep moving. So uh, that's a shock. Huh? <laughs> and that was not what I was expecting, but Garvey, we'll be praying for you. And I know with that mentality, I mean, I know you're going to beat this thing because you beat everything, you know, that that's sort of you are and what you do, but yeah, what an inspiring no, a, story, what an inspiring message. And anything we missed, anything you think we need to cover for the folks out there about the book that you'd like to, you know, express in the last few minutes we have together? 
I guess that's, uh, I, I had no idea I was going to share that with you. I've only shared it with a few people. I plan on using this after it's all said and done when I'm, when I recover to use this to inspire people. Um, but that, that was it right there is to let people know there's people out there hurting right now. There's people out there that's dealing with anxiety. I, I'm doing workshops. I'm going to open it up on Facebook. Uh, have people look me up on Facebook. I'm going to do workshops to help people that's dealing with anxiety. Uh, give them some links to go check out depression uh, that needs positive content and what appears to be not the most negative world we live in right now. You know, people like you, you're, you mean, you're a sports guy. You're, you're, when people, I, I've known you, I don't know, since forever. And, and you, whether you realize it or not, you're a positive light. You're Chris Dewar, you know, the sportsman, the, the, the guy that we see on TV and hear about. So you, you're a positive light to people. Uh, people have to find their dreams, their whys, and their goals. If they don't, they're just, this is a coach coming out, they're just wasting oxygen. You know, if you don't have your goals and your dreams, that's what I just told someone the other night. People without that right now is miserable. They got to know so you can transition and make a difference and, and look forward to the day that we can go out and, and, and take advantage and hug people and do those things, you know. So, I mean, I, I hope I've hit that point. I just want to add value to people. If they don't like it, I, there's nothing I can do about it. But I got information, knowledge in here, knowledge in this book. This is just a book. It's, you go find all this stuff somewhere else other than my personal stories. But to just look at that kid inside of here, short little overweight four-eyed fat kid that lives in here, and, and tell them that they're special. You can have what you want. Learn to work hard. Set your goals. Don't be disappointed in failure. That's a big one. Don't be disappointed in failure. You don't be afraid to fail because I, fa I failed, man. I failed in the NFL. I got cut from the Colts. Thought my life was over. Yet I played professional football until I was 32. The Chicago Bears invited me in when I was 27. Played arena football, NFL, Europe, you name it. I put on a helmet. And I learned from all of those. I, for a long time, I thought I was just failing, failing, failing until I got older and said, you know what? I learned from everything. Every broken bone, every surgery, every back pain, every whatever, I took it and used it as a coach. And now I use it as a speaker to help young men, young women. Like you said, Miss, Miss, Miss Illinois, you know, I got that on my resume that I helped train Miss Illinois, a bunch of them, you know? So, uh, get inspired. Get inspired. Everybody. Like awesome you'll see stuff, my friend. Awesome, awesome stuff. Again, the book is the 80-20 rule. Harvey told you where you can find it. Is a, it is a wonderful, quick, breezy, and meaningful read. Again, best of luck to you in your battle. Best of luck to you and your family through all this, Harvey. Great talking to you. And on behalf of everybody from Macomb, all those years you spent paid and unpaid helping the kids in Macomb, we sure appreciate you, buddy. My Macomb homies. <laughs>